Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look and see how we can turn this visualization into this visualization. If you like the look of that, then keep watching. So first things first, how do we create that first visualization? Well, it's nice and straightforward. Let's look at the code. If you don't know what any of this code means, you need to check out my intro to Dena video. It will help you out, I promise. Watch that and then come back to this one. For those who know, stick with me and let's go. So as you can see, this is a area chart. If I wanted to, it could be a bar chart just like this, but I don't want that. I want what we had before, which was an area chart. Cool. We need to just do a few steps to build what I showed you for this transformation video. Well, here, the first thing we've done is we've specified a color right there. But I no longer want to specify a color. I want to specify a gradient. Now, specifying a gradient can be a bit of a pain. I'm going to copy and paste that in, and I'm going to show you what it means. It's a little bit of typing, but it's actually not that complicated once you read through it. So let's take the code that I prepared in advance, copy that in, and we see how it goes. So what did I just copy in? I'm going to apply that change. It's going to look ridiculous, but on purpose. Don't worry. So what is this mess? I've specified three colors. I've done that intentionally because I wanted to show what this all means. So we start here where it says stops, and we're going to look at the offset zero for red. If I make that 0 0.5 instead of the zero, what you can see is that there's this really hard line between the green and the red. Now, if I make this also 0 0.5, what you'll see instead is just this red and purple with a harsh line in the middle. Why? Because it's all 0 0.5. So the 0 0.5 of the red is overlapping the green and the 0 0.5 of that purple is overlapping the green as well. So now, for example, if I change this to 0 0.1, what's going to happen? Nothing. Why? Because the red is still on top. If I change it to 0 0.9, what's going to happen? The green starts to appear because the higher number is essentially the top of the axes, right? So now I put 1, and the green is kind of now going all the way up to the 2 because now the green is overwriting the purple. Now if I put here, red zero, now the green is the more prominent color because of the one and the zero, and that's in the, that green is right in the middle of the 0 0.5. So you can play around with the Ollie values as ever with Deneb. It's about playing around and seeing what suits you best. But now I'm going to remove this terrible, terrible green because I hope now that's clear what we're doing. I only want to use two colors. I want to use actually not red, I'm going to change this to white now. And now we have exactly what we wanted. We have the white, which is at the very bottom, starting at zero, and it's moving in a gradient up to the top of the axes, which is what this purple is. That's what the stops are. The x1 and the, and the, the y1, that's me then specifying the gradient. So now, for example, if I say I want y1 to be 0 0.5, type that correctly, what you see is that the gradient is completely, well, not completely different, it's somewhat different. So now again, if I go to y1 is 0, now I have no gradient at all. 0 0.5 again, like that. So you can specify quite precisely where you want things to start. You can also, true of the X1 and the Y1, be very specific and add Y2. So on my previous video, I discussed the Y2 axes. Have a look at that. So that was the concept, and we're going to bring it in here as well. So now I'm going to say I want my Y2 to be 0. Yeah. And I want my Y1 to be 1 doesn't really change much at all. 
But if I bring my y2 to 0 0.5, now you understand that my y2 is then pushing that gradient further and further down. So really, you can play around with these values all you want and get some very precise gradients going on. But a very basic way of doing it is specifying it just like that, x1, y1, and then the two colors are where they all stop and start. You can do a lot with it, but you can also get carried away. But that's what we have now. We have this nice gradient. I think it's nice. And now we're ready to add the other element that we had to this visualization. Luckily, it's really, really easy to do. All I want to do is add essentially a bar to this visualization. So now what I'm going to do is simply copy and paste this first layer, this area, and change one thing, and it'll be us finished. So now I've copied and pasted my area. I'm going to change the word area to bar, and I'm going to apply my change. Now I have these huge bars on my visualization. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but to make it look good, all I have to do is add this, where I say width, and I'm going to say width 2. Apply that change. There you go. That's what we have. These tiny little bars which kind of point towards each data point on your area. You might not like them. That's fine. It's just an idea. Um, that's what we wanted to recreate. So once you've done all the work for the gradient on the area, you're going to use exactly the same thing to have it on your bar, and it looks like that. And as I said before, you can completely play around with the gradient. So if you want the gradient on the bar to look different, you can absolutely do that. Let's just add the 0 0.5 to the white, see how it looks. And now we have something that looks like that. Maybe you prefer that. It kind of makes the, the line stand out a bit more, but you can really play around with now the gradient on the bar, just like we did on the area. So to completely customize it, because of course the gradient on the bar can be different to that of the area. Absolutely up to you how you want to look. That's it. Nice transformation of a visualization. Very little effort as soon as you kind of get to grips with that gradient. And yeah, I hope you like that tip. I um, hope it nice, helps you create some nice, slightly more interesting visualizations. You can find the template to this visualization on my website. Really easy to use. And uh, yeah, hope you like that idea. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. And uh, take care and goodbye.